Hey everybody, it's Doug and you're watching the Dev Couch. Today we're going to be working on getting a Python Flask application running in a Docker container. So for today's project I've created a small app uh, called a non-post and what it is is sort of like a uh, little micro blog type application without any user accounts or anything like that. So this is what it looks like. Uh, all you can do here is type in some kind of title and type in a, a message along with it. Hit post and then your little micro blog entry shows up here on the same page along with everyone else's. And uh, this will serve as our uh, demo application for the tutorial. What I'm mainly concerned with here is how we get it uh, to run inside of a Docker container. So I have a little illustration about uh, what we hope to accomplish today. So in Docker we have what are called images. And what an image is is essentially a stack of everything it takes in order to get our uh, application up and running. And so in my image, I chose to use the Ubuntu file system. And then on top of that, I want to get Python. Uh, Unicorn is, our, is going to be our WSGI uh, HTTP web server. And then, uh, of course, we want our Python Flask application. So in order to design a new Docker image, all we need to do is compose a Docker file, and I'll show you mine in a little bit. Once we get our Docker file, we can run a simple Docker command in order to build the image, and then another command will spin up a container based off of that image. And you'll, you'll be able to see what all that means in a little bit here. Right, so... Uh, in my uh, directory here, I've got my source code for my application, which is in anonpost.py. And I've got everything, essentially, that a, a Python Flask application typically has if you're using Jinja 2 and, and those templates. So I've got also my virtual environment here, and I've already got it as the active virtual environment. Uh, so everything's sort of set up with the Python application. What I want to do now is just uh, get our image built and then get our application to run inside of a container. So first I'm going to go into my Docker file. And what I'm, it's a pretty simple Docker file. What I'm doing here is telling it uh, that I want to start with the, uh, the Ubuntu image. And so it'll look for this image, and if it finds it on my system, uh, it'll use that. Otherwise, it'll go out to uh, Docker Hub and see if it can find the image called Ubuntu. And it'll be able to do that. Fortunately, I already have that uh, image on my system right now. So we're just going to uh, build some layers on top of that existing image. So for you guys, if you want to start with Ubuntu, um, you might have to uh, first download it from Docker Hub, which the docker build command will do that for you, and I'll show you that in a little bit. So aside from that, uh, we're going to install our dependencies. So here's some lines where I'm just installing Python. Then we're going to drag our uh, source files over to the container and uh, and install the dependency our Python dependencies using pip from our requirements.txt file. Uh, we can ignore this line for now. This was only necessary when I was using the Flask tool to uh, run my application. Uh, we're going to expose port 5000 and then we're going to create what's called an entry point for when we run our container. And this is essentially saying that uh, 
our command is going to be unicorn uh, space the B flag space our bind address and port host and port and then the W flag uh, for worker threads and there's going to be four of those or worker processes and uh, then our, our module here is WSGI I'll show you that in a second and app is our WSGI callable so uh, pretty simple WSGI module we're just doing uh, an import of our app from the main source code an on post module and uh, running it so if I go in here this is your typical flask application uh, if you are at the point where you want to get a flask application running in docker in a docker container you probably already have one of these and it's probably a little bit more sophisticated than mine is uh, so the other thing I have in, the, in this directory is a couple of scripts I'm gonna run uh, clean docker now because I just had my application running in a container when I uh, demonstrated it to you guys so I want to clean up the container uh, that consists of stopping the container and then removing the container and then I also remove the image that I created so the other two important scripts that I've got are uh, build.sh and run.sh and it isn't absolutely necessary for you guys to uh, write shell scripts for each of these commands that I'm going to show you I just do it because uh, I don't like typing and I forget parts of commands. So uh, I'm going to start by showing you Docker images. And so you can see I've already got my Ubuntu image. Uh, the one that we're going to create today is going to build on top of that by installing Python and then uh, moving our app over to it as I showed you in the docker file. So the script or the command that we're going to use to build a new image is just docker build and I've written that into my build uh, shell script here. So we're going to say docker build t flag image name. So t flag after the t flag you just enter uh, or you just give it your uh, image name and then optionally a tag and in this case I'm going to call it the latest and uh, finally you end with the a, a dot just telling it that the uh, current working directory is the one that contains our docker file so I'm going to go ahead and run that right now and this will be a pretty time-consuming process so in the meantime I'm going to switch to another tab here and take a look at the uh, uh, the run script so the the next command we're going to we're going to want to run after docker build is docker run and what this will do is fire up our docker container so it'll be uh, docker run and then optionally you can give it a name I've just chosen an arbitrary name uh, D flag tells us to run this uh, in the background. Uh, P flag tells us which port we're exposing and which one we want it to map to. And then finally we end with the image that we want to run this container based off of. So whenever the build script is done, I'll go ahead and run the run script. Uh, so as you can see, what it's doing here is it's just taking uh, our commands from our Docker file and executing them. So for step one, it's uh, going out and looking for the Ubuntu image, which I already had. So it identified that here, and it doesn't need to go out to Docker Hub and download that image.
In the meantime here I can show you my clean docker script. Uh, all I'm doing here is since I've named the container drunk anon, I can run docker stop drunk anon, that'll just stop the container running, and I can d use docker rm to remove it, and then docker rmi uh, dash f force removes the image itself. Let's see how, how we're doing here. It looks like now we're just about finished with our uh, build script. Getting our Python dependencies now. All right, it's successfully built. So the next thing we want to do again is docker run, get our container up and running. So let's do, uh, let me just run my shell script for that. And that went pretty quickly. So first let's take a look and see our, our Docker image has been created. And then take a look at, uh, we can run Docker PS to see what containers are running. So we got our one uh, container that we just fired up here. We can also take a look at the logs to see what the output looks like so far uh, for our process. And it's showing us that uh, everything looks pretty good. So let's make sure that it's working. Got a hacky endpoint here to create a database, or initialize the database. And uh, then let's go ahead and give it a test drive. All right, so it looks like it's working. So that's how you get a uh, simple Flask application running inside of a Docker container. Uh, if I've missed anything or, or misspoke, let me know in the comments. And uh, definitely subscribe, and I'll see you all again soon. Thanks.